Well, I've been playing around with this candle um, and quite enjoying doing so, I have to say. Just making my own little modifications and experimenting with ways to make the flame flicker. And as you can see, it, it looks pretty good. It's um, not got its main circuit board anymore, though. That has been removed. Um, so I've replaced it. I've replaced the LED and I've replaced the circuitry that pulses the coil. And the, I'll show you the inside. That's the best bet. So out come the guts. Oh, if we can get out, there we go. And to make the coil waver about, keep in mind that this is sort of um, this whole mechanism has been covered in another video about the Premier candle. The coil's in here, and to drive the coil to give it random pulses, I've actually used this little circuit board here. Now this circuit board is out a cheap quartz clock, the sort of thing you'd find in a, a dollar store. Like I, I certainly got, I got this one as part of a clock out of Poundland. And these mechanisms uh, basically drive the second hand in cheap quartz clocks. And they do so by alternating the polarity of the coil by, and giving it just a pulse once every second. Um, and the alternating of the polarity means that in this case, it not only pushes this uh, flame magnet, but it pulls it as well. And it, sort of, it makes it quite random um, and it gives it a good jittering about. Uh, also, I've got it operating at 1.5 volts by tacking it across the midpoint of the battery stack. Um, it's got, this runs in two AA batteries. And I've got it between the negative connection and the middle connection, so it's only getting 1.5 volts. It will operate um, at uh, 3 volts, but um, I've found that it's um, quite subtle um, at the 1.5 volt. Uh, and it works very well because it doesn't clatter and clack off the plastic like the original did and it still gives good random movement. So that's a really simple way of pulsing the coil. The LED I changed to an orange LED. Now, I kind of that's almost a step backwards because I quite like the warm white LEDs. But in this case, um, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. And the simplest way to drive the LED is to do it straight from the batteries. In this case, two AA nickel metal hydride, which gives a voltage of approximately 2.4 volts. The forward voltage of a, a orange LED is 2 volts, which left only 0.4 volts to drop. So I used a 22 ohm resistor to get roughly 20 milliamps. And the upshot of this is it's super simple. I mean, it won't turn itself off the timer like the original circuit board had but the battery will last considerably longer and it's just a much more subtle effect. The orange flame, I kind of like it actually. Um, it's unusual. I certainly don't like the yellow flames. The yellow LED can't flicker flames because um, the yellow's too harsh and cold a looking colour. The orange is a nice compromise between that and the proper warm white. Um, and uh, it certainly looks nice. It looks slightly mystical, the colour. Uh, so I might try some other colours as well. So um, this is it, how to hack. Oh, I should add, when you uh, get the quartz clock mechanisms, you can pop them apart and retrieve the circuit board. Now, there are four connections usually on it. The two power supply connections, you'll have to note the polarity from the battery pack, uh, the way the battery is connected to it. And then there's the two uh, connections out to the coil, which have the little thin copper wires already connected to them, uh, so you can identify them that way. Just be careful, because um, there are very fine pads in these. Um, and that is about it. There's, that's not really much else to say. It's turned out really simple and uh, quite attractive. Uh,